How's it going, everyone? I'm here with Ken, Bank Pony Role Blades. How's it going? Going pretty well. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Doing great. Uh, I just want to introduce you a little bit to the guys who may have not seen you. Um, you got a great amateur background, Golden Gloves in New York, amateur champion. Um, from that point, you turned professional, correct? Correct. And, and you're signed with Mayweather Promotions, right? That's right. That's right. Funny so, oh, so with that transition, um, going from amateur to professional, did you change anything in fighting style? Do you still keep that same style from amateur? Do you have like a professional style? How would, how would you describe yourself? Well, as far as my style, even through the amateurs, I always had a pro, as you would call it, a pro-type style. My trainer always said it. I would do well in the pros because my style was suited to the professionals. So I didn't really transition and change anything, but as far as expanding different workouts and uh, different training regimens, I definitely added and tweaked that a little bit. So my style is the same, but I just tweaked it a bit. Now with that, you know, you've been in the ring, you know, sparring with some current champions, um, prospects. Who you been in there with? Uh, since I've been pro, I've been with. Brian Sabalo, Richard Comey. Um, I've been with Joshua Rodriguez. Also, I've been with some of the top amateurs around. Brandon Brown from Park Hill. We call him EJ and Pique Leon from my own gym, our own boxing club, and a couple others. But I've been trying to get around and always trying to look for the best and trying to get better as a professional. So, you know, you've been in the ring with like Richard Comey. Like, we can talk a little bit about the fact that like, how was that like? How'd you do? As Gary Stark Sr. would say, I went to college and it was definitely a learning experience. I myself found and learned and tweaked based on his experience. So it was amazing being with him for a couple rounds, even eight rounds, ten rounds, and just for the past, during this whole camp, it's just been a true blessing and a learning experience with him. I learn things every day. Now, you know, with your knowledge of boxing and being a great pugilist of the sport, how do you think Richard Coleman would do against like the other 135 champions like um, you know, Lomachenko or if Mikey Garcia would come back and be at 135. Honestly, with Richard Comey, from feeling his power and just being around him, he has 100% determination. And I feel like in this sport, once you have that, you have half the battle. There's no quit in him. He's always willing to learn. He's always willing to gain that extra bit of experience. So when you have that and you have that open mind to want to learn something, to me, that's unbeatable, and he has the right tools behind him to do well in any stage in his career right now. Would you think that would be Lomachenko's toughest fight if they would fight? Yeah. I believe so, because Richard told me he trains, he doesn't slack, he wants to win. And when you have a person who's hungry and wants to win, that's a very tough opponent to beat. Now I want to get back with you on, on your professional career. You're going to be fighting against Deontay Wilder undercard uh, against Dominic Correct. Hill coming up. Um, talk about how this all worked out. This is a big card to be on right this here. This is a very big card. This is actually my second time being on the Deontay Wilder undercard in the Barclays Center. My first time was the, um, the Deontay Wilder Luis Ortiz undercard. I also won that a fight. But it's just a blessing to be in the Barclays Center, to be a part of the money team, Mayweather Promotions, and to be in my hometown to fight under the Barclays Center lights. It's a true blessing. I've been training very hard for this moment, and it's going to show. Now, with you turning professional not too long ago, you know, do you plan on a fight pretty active within this, this year? Uh, oh, yes. You know, they say with knockouts comes more and more fights, more... Uh, more opportunity, so I'm, I'm training to get these guys out. I'm training to put guys to sleep. This is the hurt business, and I want to show my talents around East Coast, West Coast, around the world. That Ken Bank on the road is here to put on a show and here to put seats, here to put audiences in the seats. Now, from talking with you, from you seem like a very nice guy, but there's always the you know the fighting spirit. There's always the alter ego. Do you have like an alter ego? Like, do you dress in a certain way where it's flashy? You have like a, a demeanor. You know, you bank on it. Can you talk a little bit about that and how you came all together? Oh, bank on it. I kind of uh, came out with it myself because most of my life, most of my day job, career job. Well, I was a banker, so it kind of suited me. I always dressed professionally, suit, tie, uh, suitcase. So suitcase, I was a banker by day, fighter by night, so that kind of was my ultra ego. People wouldn't believe I fight for a living. And once they see me in that ring, they know it's bank on their time. What was the craziest story that like, once someone found, like, like they found out you were a boxer, you know, were you um, just, just hanging out somewhere and then they, uh, 
you know, started counting cash or like, what, what was the crazy story, I guess, came together that someone discovered that you were a boxer that they wouldn't believe? Most people wouldn't believe I'm a boxer. Most people, they, they say, oh, you know, most people say, oh, you should go into modeling, they'll never touch My mother, for, for instance, my mother would say, don't, you know, you shouldn't be boxing, don't mess up your face, but I love it. And once they see, uh, they say, I seen you on Staten Island Live, or I seen you in here or there, and they're like, wow, you really box, you're a professional. And even the LA Fitness, different gyms that I go to to train, they know my name, and it's like, wow, they really know who I am, and that keeps me going. And to their surprise, they don't believe that I'm a fighter until they see me fight in real life. Now, with that, I just want to talk about some of the music that you might come out to, ring walk, or just stuff while you're working out in the gym. Are you like a hip-hop kind of guy? Or? I'm well-rounded. I list, honestly, I can listen from country to reggaeton, to okay. hip-hop, to house, to EDM. I listen to it all, so be surprised to whatever I come out to, quite honestly. So you worked out at country music before? I work out to country music. How you, so I know, like, you know, there's rhythm where you jump roll or get the speed back. Where does country music benefit for boxing? Because, you know, you go to the gym, it's not it like be a little slow, but every song has a rhythm. And you kind of want to grasp that rhythm, that beat. So if you could grasp that, once you're in the ring, you could change rhythm as moving your feet. I use that as a tool. Whatever song comes on, I go with the beat, and that kind of guides me when I'm in the ring as well. So going up, you know, on the, uh, being on this undercard, just want to get some of your fight predictions for some of the fights coming okay. up. Obviously, Deontay Wilder, Dominic Brazil. How do you see that fight? Um, how do you predict that fight? Honestly, from what I've seen, I believe Deontay Wilder is going to make a statement. You know, there's been a lot of political conversations going as far as Deontay Wilder, Joshua. He wants to make a statement. So I believe under four, Deontay Wilder knockout. Now, you mentioned Anthony Joshua, and you had a, uh, a last minute replacement. It's going to be against Andy Ruiz, a come forward. Very uh, active fighter. Yes, very active. How would you see that fight ending? Honestly, I believe Ruiz is going to be a tough customer. He's fast, he has hand speed, he's strong, and he's, like you said, he's been very active. So a guy who's been active is very dangerous. He's adapting quicker, the sparring, the fight. So he's going to be a tough opponent. I honestly, for me, later rounds, I give it to Joshua, but if Ruiz picks up, picks up that power, that speed, he's going to give Joshua some trouble. So there's a lot, a lot of talks about another Barclays fight possibly being made. It's against two welterweights, two champions. It would be between Errol Spence and Sean Porter if that fight would be to be made here at Barclays. Who do you see winning that fight? Another tough fight, but good for boxing. I believe that Sean Porter gives anybody trouble. He's, he's a bulldog, which is hard to beat. He comes at you for 12 rounds, he's ready to fight. He gives everybody trouble. So I believe he has the right tools to beat Errol Spence, but Errol Spence, he's the truth. So he finds ways to beat these guys, and I believe in the later rounds he's gonna find a way to beat Sean Porter. How do you beat a guy like Errol Spence? You know, he's a very um, solid guy with an amateur background, um, same with Sean Porter. Um, right now it just seems the momentum, everyone's been seeing something in Errol Spence. How do you beat a guy like Errol Spence um, if you would have to fight him? That's honestly a tough code to crack. That's like saying, how do you beat, beat Floyd Mayweather, TB? There's, there's, there's no recipes. Un right now he's undefeated. No close fights, no split decisions. He's been dominating all of his fights. So it's, honestly, it's hard to say, but you gotta take, you gotta do your research. You gotta take a, take a look at the videos of Hell Brook, his past couple fights, Peterson, and you gotta pick, pick apart the little mistakes he's made, which is very little, and try to go with that. Now the matchup that a lot of people are saying is a 50-50 fight, if it would be made with Errol Spence, it would be with a Terrence Crawford. Do you believe that's a 50-50 fight? Honestly, Terrence Crawford, he's a grinder. He's determined. You know, another one who's determined and he pulls out the win. Um, that's great for boxing. That's that's the pinnacle of boxing right now, I believe, to make that matchup. And that's a fight you can say it can go either way. Honestly. Now, just kind of want to get some of the fighters that you enjoy. Who would you say is probably top three or top five pound for pound? If not in order, if you just name them. Um, who are some of the fighters that you think that belong in there? As far as pound for pound, you got to go with Canelo. He's active. He's being these guys. This last, this last uh, matchup he had, he put on a phenomenal performance. Um, Danny Jacobs, Errol Spence, of course, right now. And my third, honestly, I would have to give it to the most active has been uh, Lomachenko. 
Now, you know, when people talk about Lomachenko, they go, oh, you know, he's only fought this amount of fights and, and things like that. When people look at the amount of fights that they have in early stages, does that matter when people put them in pound for pound, or is it just based off the opposition opposed to how many fights that they have? Well, you got to look at his... His resume, his amateur pedigree is ginormous. The Olympics, the Olympic gold medals. This guy, he put in the time, put in the work. It wasn't like he just showed up overnight. You knew he, who he was when he came into the pros. So I believe he deserves everything he's getting right now. And his talent speaking for it. He's already beaten some top quality guys. And it's not like he's running from anybody. He's ready to fight. So previous pound for pound, Manny Pacquiao was one of the guys that people put in there. Um, there's possibly a fight of a Keith Thurman going down, um, maybe in Las Vegas. If that fight happens at the state of Manny Pacquiao right now versus a Keith Thurman coming back off his uh, long layoff and the whole Cicito fight, who do you see winning that fight? Honestly, I believe Manny Pacquiao, young, old, during his prime, he's dangerous. That guy comes to fight. He may not be the young of Manny Pacquiao, but he's still a monster. Still a guy you gotta worry about. He possesses speed no matter what age he is. Possesses power no matter what age he is. So, honestly, people might be surprised, but I give him a Pacquiao to win. Okay, and, and, and I want to get back with you. Mention of another former pound for pound, or maybe still active if he needs to come back. Um, Floyd Mayweather, how did you and Floyd come together full circle just for the fans who may not know? How did you guys meet and how did that whole relationship come together? We got together through actually my manager. My manager is Elvis Grant, who's also the makeup of Grant Gloves that most of the pros, even Floyd Mayweather himself, use. And he threw out the idea of, you know, picking up some New York talent. He picked up Richard Hitchens. As far as he also picked up Dylan Price from Jersey. And me from Stan. I'm the first Stan Island signed with the promotions. And he sent over a clip. You know, my, my previous amateur experience, my Golden Gloves. And they decided to give me the shot. And the rest is history. I took, you know, what they gave me. And I worked that grind. And we're here to this day. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the like, subscribe, and share. As always, if you want to support us to the next level, head over to the patreon.com backslash the boxing voice. We have tons of exclusive from Border Wars, Entitled, Betting Shows, the list goes on and on and on. But in addition to that, if you guys have questions for fighters, trainers, and promoters, this is where you can submit them. We will run out, get these questions answered, and put it back on the show just for you guys. Appreciate it. Peace.